that attack. That attack. This whole section here was literally just a tutorial. Whoa, look at his skill tree. Oh my God. Can we break the game? What the f Did I just break the game? Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna play a game, Salt and Sanctuary to be specific. So I've wanted to play this game for a long time. It's been a bit of a hit, but I've just never got around to playing it for whatever reason. So I'm gonna play that now and do a bit of a commentary over the top, analyzing the game design, the game systems, and try to find some interesting information for you guys as game developers to reflect on and use in your own projects. All right, so let's get into it. It's very eerie music already. I like it. Now, sound effect is, um, it sounds like from Silent Hill 2 UI, if you ever played that. Okay, so we've got our character customization, which is looks pretty in depth. We've got classes. Right, so the class affects our starting gear rollout. That's pretty cool. So I might just go with the knight, which is kind of the the recom you know the generic warrior type that you find in most games. And I'll just skip the rest of this stuff because I've got a feeling it's pretty in depth. Whiskers, yep. <laughs> All right, well, I'll do that. Well, should we try to make it look like me? No. Not sure if my beard is that impressive, but we'll go with it. Yeah, well, that'll do. You can easily get um pulled into these things. This world has known war for centuries, but peace is finally preciously near. So we've got a bit of a um, framing of the world, which is always nice, but you know, it's simple. It's not, it's not too pushy. Sometimes um, you find with these games, there's so much preamble that you just never get into the game. And it kind of drains you a little bit, but anyway, we're in. So, can we hit that light? Oh, so there was like a crate here. So we're clearly on a ship. <laughs> if I could tell you the amount of games which have started on the ships. Okay, so this, um, these vessel, these vases here are clearly designed to be destroyed, the way they're illuminated. So I'm drawing our eye to it. Very intentional. Okay, so we've got our first battle here, potentially. Oh. You there, stranger. We've been boarded in the night. Ugh. They they want to kidnap our lady, ransom her. Oh, brutal. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So our first fight. So Yeah. So a pretty easy fight, expectedly so. You know, the first fight of a game is very important. You know, it's the first, essentially the first mushroom in Mario. You know, it's very strategically placed by the designer. And should it be too difficult? You want to kind of, it's, it's designed to um, let the player just familiarize themselves with the, um, with the combat, like a test bed, essentially. Oh, okay, so we've got more combat here. Looks like um, baddies versus goodies kind of situation. Oh my god, this game is very gory. I do like it. So let's just clear these guys. So we've got some drops here, some collectibles or money potentially. Or, oh my goodness. So once I get through these guys, I'm like, okay, so we've got a guy rolling. Okay, so that was a bit more challenging. You can see my health is already depleting quite a bit. In classic um, Souls-like fashion. So I might just check out the other moves. Okay, so we've got this power attack if I hold it down. That's pretty cool. And you see we have a stamina meter that's being depleted. So what happens if I deplete it completely? Right, so attacking becomes a lot slower once that meter has been depleted. And, alright, so the placement of those vases here is clearly teaching us how to drop down through platforms uh, so we'll try that now okay that works so you can see the the game designer is teaching us how to play the game through clever placement of objects like that oh no we can't go through there so we've got, oh okay so we've got a door here clearly but you can see the um that effect is kind of bleeding through to the other side, probably unintentionally. 
sort of a um, little visual glitch. Okay, so we've got this. Oh my god. So in true Souls-like fashion, we have a boss very early in the game. Holy crap. I mean, oh my god. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hurting him. Yeah. I'm not touch. I'm not hurting him at all. Failing this mission would surely plunge us into the dark days. I awoke to the sounds of waves washing on rock, and I knew I was alive. I must find the princess. So I love how they've reversed this. They started by having a black background with white text, and now they've gone with the white and black text on it. That's really, really cool. Just to create that kind of contrast. Okay, so this is officially the first area. Those early areas like we just played are often just, um, you see that often in games where you just kind of get thrown straight into the action. But if you notice, interestingly enough, that boss battle was um, intentionally designed to kill us. So it was part of the story. I wonder though if we could kill it or not. Hard to say. So I like this shader, look at this. Aha, and a reflection and a little splash. That's cool. So can we go left? Nope. Man, I've got to say, the, the art direction in this game, the atmosphere is really cool. What they've done here is it's pretty special. The Shivering Shore. So these um, visuals that come up telling you where you are, I, I love that a lot because it, it gives you a feeling of progression through the world. Like um, each area has an identity. Whoa, is that a bat? Hey! Well, hello there. You're just a fleshy bit of flotsam washed uh, ashore with the rest of us. Hmm? You'll want shelter, you'll want sanctuary, but what is a sanctuary without faith? So, really good writing. You can tell the quality of the of of the of the writing here, the dialogue. A lot of people face roll the dialogue towards the end of a game in terms of like a lot of indie games, but it's worth getting someone who knows how to write to write your dialogue. Tell me, do you keep the new gods? This is cool. <laughs> yes, no. Let's go no. Let's be a bit um, contra contrarian. You don't keep the new gods? Rare. Are you a pilgrim? So I might just kind of skip through this stuff because this could be more kind of... Um, I'm not sure if it affects our class or maybe the story. But I don't think it's so important for what I'm trying to accomplish with this video, which is more of like an early design overview. So we just kind of fiddle our way through. A follower of the Goddess of Light. Your journey will be difficult. Okay, good. You know, some games, if you talk to the NBC more than once, they'll have something different to say. You survived a shipwreck, didn't you? Silence full of shipwreck. Sailors like, yeah. Okay, yeah, he is. So it's a different dialogue set. Really classy. I do like that. Oh, got um, birds. So what's this here? Okay, so we've got um, some un onboarding, which is like a tutorial. We've been taught how to use the button. So LT is shield offhand. But you see how they've incorporated it into the game? They've made it rather seamless. Rather than having a big pop up just out of nowhere on a, based on like a trigger walking into an environment. They've incorporated it into the lore of the game. You know, there's a parchment on the floor. There's some kind of strange runes or hieroglyphs or whatever you want to call it. So it's kind of seamless. And I like that a lot. Because it doesn't take you out of it. It doesn't break the fourth wall as, as, we, as you would be referred to. Okay, so we can parry. That's interesting. So block and... Yeah. So it's going to be one of those games, is it? <laughs> any, any game I've learned that has a parry is going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be a tricky game to play. But, you know, for the right reasons, of course. So we can roll as well. That's cool. Check that out. Yeah. And there's a bit of a screen shake. You see that on the roll? That's kind of cool. And if you notice here, so they've taught us some new tricks, okay? They've given us some new tools. And if you look up ahead, now they've positioned some new enemies in the vicinity, clearly wanting us to try out the new tricks we've learnt. 
parry, roll, and these things. So, very clever placement. That's what you want. If, you, if you're going to be teaching people new things, you want to also give them an opportunity to try those new things out. Makes sense, right? Let's fucking parry this guy. Okay, the AI has literally just stopped. Okay, he's back. Oh no, maybe he's just patrolling. So maybe not particularly intelligent AI. Oh, no, that parry did not work. Man, how do you parry? Okay, that's... That's tricky. See, the thing with parry in games... <laughs> getting, the, getting the timing right of parries can be pretty difficult, right? And it's quite often it's easier just to jump out of the way. So you got to be careful that you don't make um, certain systems in your game easier and make um, certain certain strategies redundant, let's say. So we got treasure. Let's press B. Sanctuary key. No sound effect, I noticed. I kind of feel like I would have liked to hear a sound effect collecting a key or treasure. You know, a bit like in um, Diablo 2 or something where different sounds, you know, ding, bang, boom, when you pick up different bits of gear. It's a nice parallax. Look at this um, camera movement with the foreground. Great atmosphere. Oh, okay. So if you move the joystick slowly, we get a walk. And then we get a run. How about this jump? Let's have a look. I always like to kind of play with the play controller and just see if I can, first of all, if I can break it. Because it's amazing how many play controllers you can break just by kind of monkey clicking. This is the... Th but I, I doubt I'll be... <laughs> this game's been around for a little while now, so I doubt I'll be able to break it. And you can see we have a kind of... The animation, we have some movement in the... In the cloak. So you can see the animations are actually look like they're rigged. They're not frame-based, they're using a rigged bone structure. Okay, we can switch loadouts. Yeah, I figured as much. Okay, so we, now we're switching between loadouts, but once again, no sound. I kind of feel like if I was building um, such a system, I might put like a little, you know, a shuffle of the clothes, just a some kind of a, a subtle noise. View inventory, okay. So very nice onboarding process so far. You can see they've really taken us through the game rather seamlessly. This whole area, this whole section here was literally just a tutorial, but it was done in such a way that it was actually rather fun to play. So consider doing that, consider putting tutorials in your own games if you're an indie, making a game rather than making a player kind of um, skip through a bunch of different panels before the game. Okay, cool. So first of all, when we open our inventory, you see that it comes kind of zooms in on the player. That's pretty cool. So we've got a bunch of attributes, strength, endurance, dexterity, willpower, magic, and wisdom. So you can immediately see the depth of this game. <clears throat> and we've got inventory, we've got nothing we can really... Yeah, so it's one of these UIs that you have to kind of get used to. Yeah, really cool. And, you know, each item has a, has a, a thorough description that um, smartly draped with a wool cape. You know, look at the look at the use of um, adjectives here. See, that's that's how you write do do writing on a game. You know, not just a cloak, a black cloak, but uh, you know. Um, or a, you know, a steel mail or whatever. It's a smartly draped, it's smartly draped with, <laughs> with a wool cape, which indicates a noble rank and provides protection from wind and rain. You know, that's... So I'll just kind of get out of, oh my goodness, careful. You can get lost in these kind of UIs though. It takes a bit of time. Open door. Okay, can we go up there? Ah, but check out this. Yeah, look at this. Look at this transition, guys. That's cool. Can we break it? Can we? Can we break? Can we break the game? No. But you can see the. Um, it's not. Lo it's not loading a new scene or anything like that. It's transitioning the same environment. It's kind of showing and hiding different panels, changing the lighting. 
This penumbra appears. Really cool. So we've got some kind of, um, I guess there's some kind of, oh, claim sanctuary. I imagine that's a bit like a bonfire situation, right? And what can we do now? Level up. Okay, no, we can't. Whoa, look at his skill tree. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. This is profound. That's what you want from a game, right? <laughs> if you're spending your bucks, you want to get this kind of level of depth. Well, maybe it depends, right? Sometimes people go a bit too much, a bit overboard, but... So what, what kind of... So you've got different classes and different... Endurance determines your maximum equipment load. Okay, so there's very, very nuanced kind of um, usages of the core attributes we have on the left. The strength, dexterity, endurance, and all that. So... Not, like, you don't learn any new skills by the looks of it. Everything is like a, you know, uh, improves your strength or your dex dexterity. Yeah, right. Well, really cool. Really cool. Uh, make offering. Nothing to offer. So that's some kind of law stuff, you know, um, and I imagine it does something. Kind of reminds me of... You know, in the Elder Scrolls games with the shrines, where you make a, um, you get a blessing. Perhaps it's something like that. Look at that uh, fire shader. It looks really cool. Okay, so you can immediately see the placement of this um, platform above me. Well, it's also got a vase on it. So I was going to say it clearly wants us to go up. Well, and secret up. So this is obviously very uh, Dark Souls with the messages. So that's pretty cool. Look at this animation. Goddess in enter let. Yep. I love the way those barrels are breaking apart. Can I kill the crow? No. Nope. We got here. Red sharp pouch of salt. Yeah, I really feel, feel like there should be a little sound effect collecting the collecting the stuff. You know, there's like a, a sound effect. Oh, what's that? Wait a second. Something caught my eye. So as I edge near the end, edge of the platform, you it's like tweening me back. Is that intentional? It's happening up here too. That's interesting. Is that a glitch? Right, I see what's going on. So the developer has intentionally coded in a system that, that if we get too close to the edge of the platform and have not made a jump, then it kind of tweens us back into a, a position. No, now you've got to ask yourself why they did, why they did that. Perhaps during playtesting, people the um, the jumps weren't precise enough so they and people were like dying or something anyway it's an interesting little little quirk there you can see yeah cool the walk is kind of funny man I've got to say I'm digging this game so far though oh is that what I ranged enemy my god you know what the shield is for let's get him So get some bolts and a pouch of salt. So this air attack is pretty cool. Yeah, right. So it allows us to kind of stay in the air for a moment. That's kind of cool. Uh, crows. I love these interactive environments. I, I do. I try to do this in my own games a lot. I, I definitely have a bunch of birds that kind of flock when I get near. But I'm a big fan of these interactive environments that you know you walk through flowers and they move. Um, you walk past the bush and uh, birds fly off it. Or in this case, you kind of run into some people hanging. Yeah, that's... Um, that's pretty gory. It's kind of interesting. But you notice that 
they're not faceless. They have some kind of, um, you know, recognizable features. So I wonder if this is part of the story, perhaps, or, you know, looks like they've got the same armor, potentially, that I do. So maybe we're of the same kind of origin. The Festering Banquet. Wow, these names. Oh, so we've got enemies coming from the floor. Yeah, you see the, the decapitations? That's cool. Shout these ranged enemies. See, you know... Composite, composite ga uh, gameplay where you're mixing kind of... ranged... Oh my god, yeah. This is definitely a Souls-like... I should be probably trying to do that, um, what do you call it? That thing. Parry. Okay, so we have a few different um, ways to go now. You know, up until now, it's been fairly linear from left to right. But now we have a few choices. We have some hidden areas down here. We've got, oh, we've got doors we can't go through yet. So, and we've got a way to go here, and we've got another thing here. So this is a bit of a hub, a hub screen, where it has a few different uh -huh, falling platforms. Classic platforming trope. So even though I wouldn't call this a platformer, it's definitely like a more of a side-scroller. It still has, you know, platforming... Um, yeah, you can see it's fa um, faded back in. It's still got some platforming elements, you know. Okay, so up, left, or something up here. Look at that. Whatever that is looks very exciting, so I'm going to get it. Torch and throwing daggers. Typically when they give you something like... I'm not sure if it is a random drops or if it's a pre predefined pickups, but typically anytime they give you like a... Um, uh, something to throw... It's typically because you're going to need it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's take a guess and see if there's um, something we need. So I might actually equip these throwing daggers. Um, yeah, that, is that a boss? No. It's definitely something new. It hasn't seen me yet. So, you know, these, these enemies probably have like a ray cast coming out of their eyes. And at some point... When I get close enough, it's going to detect me. Oh, so that guy's seen me already, I think. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yep, throwing definitely helps. Can you get up? No, he can't get... Oh, my God. That guy hits hard. What is that? Return. Bell. Oh, my... What the... F what? Did I just bust? Did I just break the game? Was I meant to be able to go here? That didn't look like I was supposed to be able to go here. I mean, or maybe I'm wrong. Let's have a look. What? How did I get... It's like I got pushed... I got pushed through the wall and... I'm confused. <laughs> whatever it did, whatever it was, it was cool. Um, I'm tempted to go back just to have a look, but I've, I've definitely like opened up an area. So this is interesting. I mean, just with the way I made that impact, it, it gave me the feeling that that the enemy literally pushed me through the wall collider. Oh, he's still alive. He's still alive. Kill him. Okay, I did it. So that guy's tough. So how did I do that? Guys, that was epic. So there's clearly, there's no way through this wall. <laughs> I've just broke the game. Oh, that's awesome. Can I get up there? No, I can't. You see, I can't even go here. So there's more dudes up there. So <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll get back to that in a moment. But let's, let's comment on a bit of um, more game design. So you can see here, 
I can't jump up here. So you ask yourself, well, can I go through here? No, you, no, I can't, but I did, <laughs> but no, I can't. But um, so up here we have what you would call foreshadowing where they've intentionally allowed us to see a way forward that kind of suggests it might lead to um, whatever that thing is over there. And that music's kind of kicking off a bit too. Oh, oh. Yeah, I hate flying enemies. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm tempted to go back to that place now. Red shard, okay. I might, you know what? I think I need to use a potion. Huh. Look how slowly the potion recovers. So, you know, in some games you take the potion and your, your health will replenish instantly. So in this game... They want you to basically try to be out of combat if you can, because if you try to pot or take health during combat, you're still going to be at risk. It's not going to just um, refill your health. Makes it a bit more realistic as well, but this looks like it could be a secret passage. So I've been collecting a lot of those shards. I would like to know if it's um, for anything. Yeah. I'm gonna instead of going forward and going through that cheater route which I believe is a cheater route I'm just gonna continue on this way because I'll play the game the way the developer and designer intended it to be played to be fair oh man yeah very fair two of these guys so we have I'm gonna need that that annoying ranged enemy uh, now I've got these guys behind me. Okay, so you can see it's like they expected some plays to be up here, so they intentionally added more zombies to come up behind. So let's let's make a break for it, guys. Let's do it. Oh no, are they chasing? Can they come through? Oh my man, the way they come through the platforms. Ah, oh, this guy's really hard. Yeah, I'm just getting my ass beat. Sanctuary, is it? Where? Where is this sanctuary you speak of? Here? Stone blacksmith. So this is a massive leap of faith. Um, normally I'd jump off this just to see what the developer intended. But I've got a feeling, because of the kind of game it is, that it will just be like a death. And um, the the spikes that you see here coming off the edge is very telling. It it gives it like an a menacing look, almost like danger. So, so the through the art direction, they're kind of hinting to us that it might be a bad idea to do that. What's this? Need advance. Yeah, okay. So can we what can we do here? Ah. So here's a little visual glitch. You can see that the the candle lights are appearing in front of the player and the sconces behind the player. That's kind of cool. Huh. So I've not played this game yet but i can already tell you <laughs> what's about to happen um <laughs> any guesses guys so some of you might have played this game so you probably already know but this clearly indicates to me a place of danger and this long ladder there's a few key design elements here um well first of all there was like a sign where it said need advance well okay so it's pushing us forward right and then you've got this long ladder. So if you've ever played the Mega Man games, you'll know that before bosses, there's like a corridor, you know? And though this is not a corridor, it's um, a place of um, uh, safe movement. And it kind of gives, what it, the intention of it is, it gives you a feeling of calm before a storm, let's say. But um, 
yeah, this to me clearly is a boss area. And what I'm not sure is, if I walk up, is that some kind of a door that's going to close behind me? So, before I do that... Take hey, this freaking ladder, get me off. Um, this being a Souls game, which means I probably lose everything if I die. I'm going to backtrack just a bit to, um, to do something with these salts, because... Oh, oh, this is that journey bottle. So there's a lot of, I oh, hey, look, you, right, so you see these guys are, um, are moving between rooms. So you often don't see that in games. Often when you move into a new area like this, enemies will kind of, they won't follow you. Um, but you can see in this game, they actually will follow you to the next area. This is where I was before. So maybe I can go. Maybe I was meant to. Okay, it's locked. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this area was accessible, but I somehow got pushed into it through another way anyway. But whatevs. So I thought there was like an altar here. Huh. I must have missed that guy. Let's quickly kill that guy. Maybe we can find something to... Yeah, you got these enemies. They kind of blend into the environment a little bit. So let's see how smart this AI is. Let's see first his range. How far will he follow me? Come on. Okay, so he's got like a balking animation. Keep following. Oh, okay. So he will happily follow me till... Oh my god, he hits hard. So first of all, I'll take his little goodie here. So you can see here, the enemy was in this little section here. And be beyond the enemy was a treasure. So it's a bit of a rule. If you're going to um, put a formidable enemy or one that's above average difficulty in a particular section, you want to entice the player to, to go fight with that enemy. So you want to kind of place some kind of object of interest. In this case, there was like a little uh, treasure here. Because, especially in games like this, players, if they can avoid a fight, they will avoid a fight. Um, because this game is all about conserving health. So keep that in mind. My God! Oh, brutal. Yeah, look, he stole 660 salts. Okay, so what happens now? <clears throat> you see, and now I can't level up because I lost all my salts, right? <clears throat> so let's first of all see if I can get those salts back. And I'm going to head to that boss area. And we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can... We'll check that out and we'll probably wrap it up after that point. But, um, please drop my salts. Did he leave it here? Oh, come on! So is that... No, that's not the dude. So, unfortunately, it looks like you can't reclaim your salts. Ah, oh, man. The positioning of... Oh, let me just kill this guy first. My god, the positioning of enemies. I mean, that's that's one way to make a hard game. You know, you position enemies right next to the edge. So when they jump up, they have to fight. Um, oh, look. Okay, so very interesting. Very interesting. So that enemy there is the one who killed me. And you can see now he's, um, he's emanating some kind of a glow, which is clearly the salts that he's stolen from me like that's quite evident uh, without even knowing um, it's clearly what what they're trying to communicate here so very good design communication well now I need to kill that guy and without oh what did I do okay let's just do this range attack it's not like powering up is he let's... Alright, so I've got my salts back, guys. I'm very happy. So 
So let's <clears throat> backtrack a little bit. Ever so slightly. So these enemies like respawning everywhere, I think. If you have enemies that come out of the floor, the advantage is you can kind of, um, you can just spawn them anywhere you like. At any time. So let's go in here and see what we can do with this. Yeah, I think leveling up is probably the best thing we can do. Ooh, wow. Very classy. Very cool effect. See, if you're going to level a player up, you want them to really know they're leveling up. This kind of punchy overlays are always a good thing. Okay, so maybe we can... Can I make an offering here? Aha, so that's what that thing was that we found. Uh, craft and grants attack bonus to Sanctuary Region. I mean, I'll do it. Oh, what? Did I, just, did I do it or not? Who are these characters now? Oh, okay. Look, so that was interesting. You know, I, I made an offering, but no feedback. There was no... You can see in the bottom left of the screen, there's a little idol. Um, next to the salts that's been activated. But, you know, when you make a offering at a shrine, you'd expect to almost hear like a... As they did in some of the old Elder Scrolls games. So, yeah, I I'll, I'll actually wasn't even sure if it worked or not. So, anyway. Just a little observation. So, right. So, once again, very good UX. Very good user experience. It's highlighting for us what we can and can't upgrade to. So that saves us a lot of time, so we're not just kind of uh, randomly checking through everything. So I'll just kind of do that. Fortify and sprint. Yeah, sure. So it's a skill, isn't it? What else can we do? So you can remove a skill. Okay, so it's like activating it for a tempor temporarily, maybe, or while we have it equipped. Who's this guy? Need some smithing. So we can talk, we can buy, we can upgrade. What can we upgrade? So 250. Okay, so the currency is the salts, you know, for buying stuff, for leveling. You don't always need multiple currencies. Some people go to town on this, they, you know, they have like orbs and they have coins on top of that. Sometimes you can just use one abstract currency. It doesn't have to be coins. So, uh, you know, a blacksmith is taking salt, which is not uncommon because in the Dark Ages, people actually got paid with salt because it was a um, commodity. So how do I actually upgrade this, though? Select. Huh. So I don't think we can do anything, actually. So we, yeah, okay, so we're missing some kind of a necessary item. Or can we buy something? Okay, so once again, it eliminates what we can't, can't buy. Uh, I like that. Can I buy that? No, I can't. Why? Can I buy anything? Uh. So I can buy the axe. I can buy this, but I can't buy this. And I wonder if that's because I already have it. Because it looks like the the icon looks the same as the one that's already in my top left, currently equipped. So that could be that could be what it is. Uh, I mean, I don't really want this other stuff at all. So I might just I might just leave that. I'm gonna head back. I'm gonna head back for that boss. Scenery and you know transition. There's a music change in between these transitions. There's a lot to like about this game. There's a, you know a lot of thought. A lot of thought has gone into um, into everything really. Oh, okay. see, I did not see those guys at all. But that's I guess that's on me as the player. You know, um, it's, it's a little bit on the designer, but that's kind of the rules they're playing by. You know, they've established this rule of hard to see items so here's interesting we can kind of see through the wall so there's an item here bundle of salt 
um, which I found out sooner. Bookshelf, nothing to... Oh, okay, enemies rising. Should probably be doing more rolling. So, can we go up there? You know, a bit of foreshadowing as well, a little bit. I guess either intentional or not. Oh, man, I've been here. I've done this. I'm, I'm not in the mood to fight those guys again. Oh, jeez. They're going to follow me, aren't they? Yep, of course they are. This ladder's in... Oh, God. <sighs> it's interesting. When you have a ladder and a combat situation, you kind of get stuck because you're trying to jump. And, see, I can't attack while I'm on the ladder. So you kind of have to get away from ladders. So do consider that also if you're working on a game that has ladders. You don't want to place a ladder right in the middle of a important um, combat region. Those daggers are not particularly strong. We've got some goodies over here. Oh wow, so we've got new new gear. What's this? Inventory, what did we pick up? So Aha, uh -huh. so we can change to a rogue jacket. Okay, so it looks to me like this is kind of class specific gear. So if you want to be like a rogue. I might um that's cool. So you can see the character changes. Uh, look, you know, I'll put it on. You know, the, the, they've put it here for a reason. Either it's optional, depending on the kind of character you want to play. Yeah, right. I did have that sword after all. Okay, so let's um, let's proceed. So I might wield a two-handed because I found I found I'm not blocked a whole lot anywhere right now. I go through here. Yeah. So is this a new? Okay, so this is a new section, I think. I'm not sure I've been here. Oh, have these guys now. Ring. Okay, I'll put that on. That could be useful. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. Don't do that. Ah. So you notice that um, during the inventory screen or pause that the enemies are still um, attacking. So some games don't do that. Some games will do a time scale zero on the entire um, play space and everything will kind of stop in unison. So I've got a ring. So how do I get to that boss? So I can't... There's something up there. You can see. Look, there's something up there. Like a light. What do you think? Is this a death fall? Probably. You can just tell sometimes <laughs> when it's not a good idea to jump. Oh man, see I did not see that guy. Jeez. So have I been here? I have been here. This is where I ran past initially. So what I'll do... I'll tease them down here. Yep, good. It's not doing it. It's not doing what I want. Okay, come on, AI. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. ah, sanctuary. Okay, I've been here. Right, so this is where I need to go. This was the... Yep, yeah, okay. So here we are, guys. I've leveled up once. Ah, and look. By the time I got here, I have a lot of salt, so I probably could level. Up, I could have leveled up twice, but so let's see if I was right. Let's see if this is in fact a boss area. Right, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, no, no rewards there because it's pretty obvious. Can I go out? Yeah. See, I can't leave. Oh my god. Can I? Oh no! Run. That's not good. Big hits. Big hits. Yeah, it is hard. Ah, yeah. Good health, health. I'm <laughs> These kind of bosses, you got to play them a few times. you got to learn the pattern. Beating them on your first time, first tries, 
is often a not possible, but you never know. Okay, so, all right. So you got to learn the pattern and you can't be too hasty. So we're doing okay. Please, please. So I cancelled his attack. That's interesting. Man. Please, please. Come on, man. Please. Please. <laughs> so close. So close. So close. All it takes is a few hits from him, man, and I'm I'm done. Yeah, I'm I'm not liking where it's at at the moment. I've got actually I've got more of these. Quick, man! I should have used this sooner. What was I doing? I might have a chance here, guys. So he's kind of just waiting for me at this point. Yep. Well, he turned around. Okay, there, there was no telegraphing from the enemy in that moment. That attack! That attack! That. Come on, man. One more hit and I'm dead. <sighs> Obliterated. Well, that's an understatement, but... The problem is I lost so many of those health pots that... To beat him without buying a bunch of new ones is going to be difficult. But you know what, I will leave it there guys, because I think it was a, a good enough taste of what this game represents. Would have been nice to beat that boss and kind of see what's in the next um, section, but you know, <laughs> you can't win them all. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this um, play session and uh, game designers, game developers commentary. I uh, had a lot of fun doing it. So if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos or you have a video that you'd like to see me play and analyze, please do leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, see you all in the next video. Bye.